Here we have an Asus laptop that came in for repair, and this one is model number. It's an Asus GA502 IV-PH96. Let's read what the customer wrote. I have this exact issue in your video where no lights are on when connected to AC power and will not power on. And he has a link to our YouTube video. I'm not sure if I need expedited service or insurance. I'm looking for a quote for this repair. We already have the laptop, so the customer already mailed the laptop, but let me see what Dolly replied to him. Dolly replied and she wrote, hello, thanks for reaching out. Estimated cost to repair this device is $295. If we cannot fix it, the cost is $85 for diagnostics and repair attempt. Thank you. And Dolly also quoted the customer for insurance, $22 if we want to insure the package for $1,000 or if we're insuring the package for $800, it's $17. And those are the rates of the post office. We do not make up those numbers. That's what it costs to insure packages for $1,000 or $800 or whatever the case may be. We are always as clear as possible with the customer. Like you saw what Dolly wrote. If we are able to fix it, we're going to charge that price. If we are not able to fix it, we're going to charge that price. It takes Big Boss time to disassemble the board, the laptop. It takes me time to go over the board, inspect front of the board, inspect back of the board, solder components if we have to, and then we have to reassemble the board. It's a lot of work. If we do this free for everyone, then we're going to get a lot of junk in our shop. Somebody that knows this device cannot be fixed, he already took it to five other shops, he's going to send it over to us because he knows that we're not going to charge him any money. No, if you send it over, you're going to be charged for a bench fee. We want customers to think twice before mailing anything here. We do not want to receive junk. We still do receive junk, we work on them, we're not able to fix them, and we charge them for the repair attempt fee. It's a win-win for us. Actually, it's not that much of a win to us because it takes two people to work on that device. Big Boss has to disassemble, take apart that device. I have to work on it, we have to reassemble it. So the $85 here in the US is not much. It's not much. Maybe if you are from India, if you are from Pakistan, if you are from whatever country, it may seem like $85 is a lot, but here in the US, it's not. So we are always as clear as possible, even with locals. When we have a local person come in, we give that person a quote. They came in with a 2020 Asus laptop, and I quote the customer based on that model laptop and based on my experience working on that specific laptop, it's $349 to fix that laptop. And the first thing the customer does, oh man, it's expensive. And I just keep quiet. And then the customer is waiting for me to tell him, okay, let me see what I can do for you. We're going to lower the price. That does not happen. I do not give the customer a price from my, you know, I just, we just give customers one price. We do not negotiate prices. If the customer is thinking a lot about the price I gave him, I tell him, go home, relax, drink a cup of tea. When you decide that you want to fix it, you can drop in 12 to 5, Monday through Saturday. And now the customer suddenly want to leave the device. And I'm telling the customer to go home, think about it, do not commit now, and the customer is 100% sure that he want to leave the device. It's like reverse psychology. I'm telling the customer we do not want to take it, and the customer want to leave it. It was the opposite when the customer first came in. So we do not negotiate prices. Whatever price you get is the price that it will take to fix that device. People do not know what goes on behind the scenes taken apart, reassembling, working on the board. Sometimes we have to spend more time than usual diagnosing the board, so on and so forth. A lot goes on. And then if you count the overhead and you count everything else, what we are charging is very cheap. So let's take a look at this board and see what's going on. We're going to start with the DC connector right here. And we do not see any close by power MOSFETs. That's OK because I have worked with this model many times. We're going to go here, and we're going to inspect the drain of the MOSFET on the bottom. I know Asus laptops by heart. I work on them every single day. And up till this date, I learn new things every day. Once you think you know everything, you stop learning, right? So let's go here, and look at this. We got that chip where it hurts. We have a short circuit.
just a minute. My real estate agent just called. As you know, I've been looking for a house for the past two years since COVID started. And <laughs> in California, the thing with California is it's very difficult to buy a house. How is it difficult to buy a house? A house is, let's say, $1.5 million. I agree. I want to buy that house. You cannot. Why? Because you have to go into war with others. You have 10 other people fighting for that house, and you go into war with other bidders, and you end up losing that house. When you go into a war with other bidders, you can expect to pay $200,000, $300,000 more than the listing price. I lost four homes because of overbidding. House is listed for 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. Just recently, I told my agent to put an offer on a $1.8 million house. I told them to put $25,000 more. And I told them to do one eight twenty-five. Let's start from there and see how it goes. So we put the offer on Wednesday. My agent said that the seller's agent contacted him. They have four other offers and all of them overbid. They want us to put our best offer and they will decide. That was on Thursday. So they wanted the counter offers by Friday. I told them, all right, put 1.9. I really want that house, a full basketball court, a swimming pool, a yard, a tree house, amazing house, amazing house. I told him, put 1.9. And he said, I think 1.9, we should be able to get the house. I told him, all right, I do not want to lose it like I did with the four other homes that we overbid and lost. Just put 1.9 and get the house. He said, okay. So I called my agent on Friday. Any news? Did we get the house? And he said, not yet. We need to hear back from the agent. He contacted the agent and everybody overbid and they said, and she said, the agent, the seller's agent said that all four offers are comparable to the offer that we put. Okay, so who are you going to choose? My agent told the seller's agent that we have no issues with money. We're not going to appraise the house. We're just going to take it in its condition and we want the house. Today is Tuesday and we still do not have an okay from the seller's agent. I told my agent, what's going on? And he said, the seller is looking for something around 195, $1.9 million and $50,000 more. 1.9 did not cut it for the seller, even though he listed the house for 1.8. We put 1.9 and now the seller wants $50,000 more. I told my agent, I don't think we should put any more. 1.9 is more than enough. So I told my agent, just stick to the 1.9 and let's see what happens. Today is Tuesday and we still did not hear from the seller's agent, and it looks like it's another house that we're gonna lose just like the rest of the homes that we lost to overbidding. That's California. People tell you, get away from California. Why are you still living in California? Go to another country, go to another state. I love California. I love what California has to offer. The weather in California is unbeatable. I've been to a lot of other states in the US and I do not feel at home. I do not feel comfortable and I feel like it's true what real estate agents always say, location, location, location. You are paying for location. I can probably get the same house in some other state for half the price or even less, but you're talking about California. I do not want to go outside of California because I love California and I want to stay here. A lot of people in the comments are going to suggest that I move away from California, go to another state, go to another country, but that's not happening, at least not now. And if I can get that house, I want it. If not, I need to look at something else. That's real estate in California. I used to do videos every Sunday, open houses. I go to open houses and I record the video, I post it. A lot of people used to enjoy it, but then I stopped. I saw so many homes, it's overwhelming. I stopped, maybe I should do it again. If I do not get that house, maybe I'm gonna start doing it again. So like I said, that's our DC connector. If we measure here, we have a short circuit. Now all we have to do is inject voltage and look under a thermal camera and see where that short is coming from. The phone is ringing again. Maybe it's the agent. Just a minute. Yep, that's him. A little frustrating. I kind of put my foot down in a nice way. I'm like, listen, sweetheart, um, you asked me for a price. 
We went out of our way. It took me a lot to convince my client to give you that price. I played that game, right? Right. And it went in, and you guys have been, in my opinion, in my client's opinion, I've been playing a game that I feel like you're going to come back and ask us for more money down the line. And, um, you know, I just want to know what the status is, what the seller is willing to do, and what does he want to do. Does he really want to sell this home? Yes or no. If not, please let us know because, you know, it's only fair, you know, give us in good faith, out of respect, with a nice response and, you know, and a mature response rather than all these little games here and there. Exactly. If it's more money, we need to know. If it's not more money, we need to know. Mm -hmm. um, what is it that is happening that I need to know? Then she goes from agent to agent. Do you think your client will go up to 195? I'm like, you want to risk it? I will go ask him with a smile on my face. Right. I don't think anyone has gone up to 195. I don't think anyone has come close to our offer. Maybe by five or ten thousand dollars close to our offer, but no one has the one nine mark on there, and that's why you're still reaching out to me, and you're still trying to call me down until the seller makes a decision. So, and all I care about is we want this house, and we've done our best to get this house. And if I don't get an answer by tonight on what exactly you want and whatever my client's reaction will be after tonight perfect that's on you and not on me i think um, i told her i'm not gonna lose my client the seller is the one losing because we can find another home i think you did good i think 1.9 we gave them a very good offer we put one hundred thousand dollars more and i do not think they have anything more than 1.9 otherwise she would have told you that we have somebody else with more money so i think Absolutely. i think at 1.9 uh we're good let's stick to our grounds and give me a call when you have news i will i will 1.9 million and fifty thousand dollars that's what the seller is looking for i told them no we're not going anything more than 1.9 million and we're done i don't think they have any offers that beats ours and if they do they would not have spoken to us they would have spoken to that person with the higher offer just stick to our grounds and if it does not work out for that price i put one hundred thousand dollars more from 1.8 to 1.9 million dollars. We should get an answer by tonight. I took you on a whole different journey with the house and what's going on. But that's what's happening right now. So what we're gonna do right now is inject voltage at the short. We measured for a short circuit right here. And a short circuit here could be a lot of things. It could be one of the V-core MOSFETs, it could be a shorted cap, anything goes. So I have my thermal camera right here. The board starts from here. We do not have the fan and heat sink. The fan goes here. And another fan goes right there. And let's see. Whatever you are seeing here is just a reflection. This here, it's a reflection. If I tilt the laptop, reflection is gone, okay? So you have to be able to differentiate between a reflection and the heat spot. I did not inject voltage yet, but I'm gonna do it shortly. The NF dot short is off, so we're gonna turn it on. Uh, we're gonna start by injecting 1.4 volts. And look at this. Look at this. Right here. We got it. Something is getting hot all the way down on the bottom. Let's go back to our microscope right here. It could be the MOSFET itself. Actually, I pointed at the caps, so it has to be one of those two caps. None of them look physically damaged. Both of them look good. Nothing looks abnormal. But what we can do is I can use my atomizer or a cotton swab with some isopropyl. I'm gonna inject voltage. Let's inject voltage and I'm gonna apply some alcohol right here. And look at this, the cap on the right is the bad guy. Alcohol evaporated first and we still have alcohol or isopropyl on the one on the left. Look at this. We got it, we got the bad guy. Say hello to the bad guy. Right, and let's get rid of this cap. 
Just remove the cap and we're gonna measure again. Do we have a short circuit? Let's go back here. And are you ready? One, two, and ta-da, 0.4 voltage drop. Amazing, amazing, we did it. The customer said, I hope it's an easy repair. We figured out the problem. And hopefully we are able to fix his laptop. Hopefully replacing that cap will fix the issue. Let me grab a new cap right here. Apply flux. Let's prep the pads, fume extractor on. Now we grab our hot tweezers. We are working on carrying hot tweezers stations. I'm in the process of testing few stations and I will announce it when we have them for sale. Wow, Kimtech wipes, wow. If you are a hobbyist or in the same type of business, you know that you can buy all your tools from our shop. All items are in stock and orders almost always ship out same day. We have everything from soldering stations, hot air stations, power supplies, thermal cameras, original Amtec flux, braid wick tweezers, whatever we use on our bench for the most part is sold in our shop. Just log in to northwishfix.com, add to cart, check out, pay, and we ship almost always same day. We are done. I'm gonna hand this laptop over to Big Boss to reassemble and test. We do not have the fans and heatsink. I told Big Boss do not disassemble the board. Let me take a look and see what's going on. Maybe we can fix the problem from here. So we do not have to disassemble it. And as you can see, we still have all the connections, but some Asus laptops will not turn on if we do not have the fans and heatsink. So let's try it. I connected the battery and let's see. Assuming the battery is charged and it looks like the battery is not charged. I'm not able to turn the laptop on by pressing on the power button. Okay, let me see if I have an Asus laptop. Asus laptop. Let me see if I have an Asus charger. I do. I do have an Asus charger right next to me. So let's plug that charger in and maybe all that talk and all that work went for nothing. Who knows? One way to find out. And nothing. Oh. The charger is not connected. <laughs> Almost got scared. We do see a light right here. We do see a white LED. Power on. And the keyboard lit up. We do see a light at the button, but nothing on the screen yet. Like I said, we may have to put the fans and heat sink back on the board. It looks like the laptop went off immediately, so very likely a fan heatsink issue. Big Boss will have to reassemble the fans and heatsink, and we'll try again. I'll be back. Check on Big Boss. This is fan is connected, heatsink connected, and hopefully it works. I see the lights on the keyboard like we did and I see the light on the power button. Fans are spinning? Yes. Not yet, okay. And did it go off? It's still on, so that's a good sign. Because when I tested, the laptop was going off in two seconds. So it's still on, but we wanna see something on the screen. Yes, yes. So it's a fan heatsink for this model. We must have the heatsink and fans for the laptop to work. Amazing, amazing. 
the customer is probably watching and he's happy. And I can tell you one thing, when Big Boss touches something, it works. How? I don't know. Magic. Thank you, Big Boss. Boss of all bosses. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.